It's important to ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. We need God's Holy Spirit to help us understand his holy things. What does this verse tell me about God? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and if you're new here, welcome. My channel is all about me sharing my personal journey with Christ to help you through yours. And today I wanna to tackle the question of how should we read the Bible? Not from a perfect standpoint of this is how you should read the Bible, but from my personal experience, how have I read the Bible and what do I do when I read the Bible, etc. Specifically focusing on how I started. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. So before diving in, I just want to let you guys know that I have a whole series on how to start reading the Bible for beginners, which you can click on right here to watch where I talk about how to gain the desire to want to read the Bible, what book we should start reading, how to read the Old Testament, and other topics like that. But in this one, I really want to talk like how do I read the Bible? So hopefully it can inspire you on what you should do. The first thing I would say is that you want to start small. When I first started reading the Bible two years ago in 2019, I started small because it was so intimidating to me, the thought of reading 66 books in a Bible in a year, because many people have done that, or just reading it in general, that many times the thought of reading the Bible would be overwhelming for me. But then I was encouraged to just start small. Just read a little bit, even if it's just one verse a day, that's totally fine. And for me, what I would do to kind of build on that starting small was that I really wanted to learn the Word of God, learn from it, but most importantly, apply it because in the past, I did try reading the Bible, but it never really stuck with me or stayed there. So what I started to do was I started small and I would read a little part of a chapter or a few verses and I would just meditate on it. So for example, when I read James and I talked about if we consider ourselves to be religious, but we don't control our tongues, then we're just fooling ourselves. Something around that line, I'll include it. When I first read that verse, it stuck with me because I realized that many times I would talk without really thinking about what I was gonna say. So it was something that convicted me. It was a verse that convicted me. So when I read it, I couldn't just skip to the next verses and read more and more every day, or I could have, but for me, what helped was reading the verse every day for a few days, so like three to five days, let's say. I read it every day, why? Because I really wanted to meditate on the word. So it's very important not to just read a little bit every day and feel like you're doing progress just because you made it to the next chapter or the next book, but measure your progress by how much you are actually applying this word. Do you actually understand what you read, if it stood out to you, or if it convicted you? You know, you really want to let the word marinate into your heart because marinating like when you marinate a chicken what you do is you put the seasoning and then you put it away so that the, the seasoning can really seep into the chicken for example or the meat and the same way we should allow the word to marinate in our hearts by meditating on it and the best way to meditate on it is to read it repeatedly for a few days until it just sticks with you that's how i've been able to under to like recite or not maybe like verbatim certain verses in my head um, but I can remember because I'm like, I can recall a little easier now because I've read it and I haven't just read it once, but I've read it multiple times until I actually apply it to my life. Um, it's not easy, but when you understand that that's really what the Bible is for, it's not for just our gaining of understanding, but our tr the transforming of our hearts. You won't feel the pressure of, I need to read this whole chapter by today, or I need to read an entire chapter in one day. No, just read a verse. Carry that verse with you throughout the day. Have it in your mind. Try to apply it. Okay, I need to control my tongue, for example, that verse. All right, so when someone speaks to me crazy, I'm gonna just really try to not speak crazy back to them. <laughs> um, even though if you still might speak crazy to them knowing that verse, but if you see you still have trouble applying it a little or understanding it, spend a few days on it and don't rush or feel like you need to read the whole Bible by the end of the month. I mean, for me, I haven't even read the whole Bible. And it's been two years because to be honest, some days you don't read it, some days you do. Some days I spend a really long time on one chapter, on a few verses. Some days I skim through some things. So it's very important to, to just start small and, and meditate on it, you know, quality over quantity. The next thing I do that really has helped me understand the Bible as a beginner is to take notes and write down verses that really stand out to you. 
So if you want something to stay in your mind, like for example, if you're studying for a test, you usually read it over and over, but you also write it down. It helps to write down verses that really stand out to you and not just write it down in your Bible, but write it in like a journal or write it on a paper. Like for example, if you're meditating on that verse that I mentioned earlier from James, write it on a paper and put it on your refrigerator. Put it somewhere where you can see. Write it down, and if you need to write it down multiple times, write it down multiple times. But usually what helps for me is just writing down the verse in my journal, and maybe sometimes, at the beginning I wouldn't do this, but now I kind of do, which I write down the verse, and then I write down what it means to me, or how I can apply it to myself. And some questions, or three questions, that can help you understand the Bible and connect it to your life, are these three questions. What does this verse tell me about God? What does this verse reveal to me about his character, about what he does, who he is, um, his promises? What is this verse telling me about God? So for example, when I read that verse about controlling our tongues, if you consider yourself religious, but you don't control your tongue, you're only fooling yourself. What that tells me about God is that God cannot be fooled and that God expects certain things from us as his children. He doesn't expect us to just say things without thinking. He expects us to think about stuff. And also that he's, he's watching at all times. We can fool ourselves, but we can't fool him. The next question is, what does this tell me about me? What does this tell me about humans, of humanity? What does this say about us as humans? And not just generally speaking, but what does it say about me, right? Because when the Bible talks about people, it's talking about us. When the Bible gives instruction, God is talking to us, not to just the people of that time when that book or chapter was written, but to us. So what does this tell me about me? So for example, using that, that verse from James, what that verse tells me about me is that sometimes we can fake the funk. We can fake that we're Christian um, and we can just do things that feel right instead of actually thinking about it. And the next question is, how does this relate to my life, right? I kind of touched upon that, but how does this verse, this story, whatever it may be that you're reading in the Bible, how does it relate to my life? What is this verse calling me to do? So for example, with that verse, this relates to my life in that I need to reflect on my life and how I'm using my words, how I'm using my tongue, what am I what am I saying to people, how am I saying it. I need to be quick to listen and slow to speak. So that's an example of those three questions and those three questions can guide you through any part of the Bible and they help you understand the relevancy of it because ultimately if we read something and we don't know how it relates to us, it's just like reading any other book. But when you know the Word of God, the Bible, is there to transform you, it's important to ask these questions so we know why why it's important, like why, why does it even matter? And the fourth thing that I would say is to look up resources. You know, now we live in a digital era where there's so many resources to help us understand the Bible, but also we need to be a little careful with some resources, make sure, you know, go to various sites, make sure that it correlates, um, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you because you know, there could also be some false doctrines in the sites that you're reading, meaning that some of their interpretation could be wrong, non-biblical, non-Christ-centered. Um, One that I would greatly recommend is the Blue Letter Bible. My friend Sabrina told me about it and it's so, so awesome. I love specifically um, David Gusick, I think that's his name, his commentaries. So the Blue Letter Bible is just a resource where you can find different commentaries, which are basically explanations of the Bible. So explanation by theologians and teachers of the Bible. And what I really love about this is that they break down every verse in their commentaries, at least in David Gusick's, because he's the main person that I read. And I love it because I love the way he does it because he breaks down every verse and explains it in a way that makes sense and makes you understand what this means for me today. And also the Blue Letter Bible is good because they they um, can define the original meaning of the words for you. But I mainly just go to it for commentaries. Another great resource is your local church. So if you're not a part of a local church, I recommend you join one. Make sure. It's one, you know, that you've prayed about, that God has led you to, and that teaches sound doctrine and has a good teaching, like a Bible class or something like that, a Bible study. Join those things, tap into those communities so that they can help you as well. YouTube obviously is a great source as well because there's so many people that talk about Bible verses and help us have more understanding of the Bible. But again, just make sure they're teaching sound doctrine and not 
misinterpreting the word. So just pray about it and ask God to lead you to the right resources. And lastly, what I would say is as you read, make sure you pray. Make sure you pray before you read, actually, and as you read. Um, like I said, many times I would try to start reading the Bible and it just didn't make sense. It wasn't relevant to me back in the day. One, because I just didn't have that desire or intention to truly understand it. I did it more so because I felt it was the right thing to do as a Christian, like as a religious activity. But now that I read it to actually be edified and to get to know God better, it's important to ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. We need God's Holy Spirit to help us understand His holy things. So if we really want the word to transform us, we need to ask God as we read and before we read to help us understand it. And if we can't understand it, to bring us to the right people, resources that can teach us and help us understand it. I just encourage you to just start, just start reading. And if you don't have that desire, ask God to put that desire in you. And again, remember, it's not something we do to check off a box or for religious activity. We're doing this to know God. Okay, if you don't read it one day, it's fine. Just don't let that become a habit. Make sure you continually seek God. Make sure you continually want to learn about his word and who he is. God bless you. And if you want to watch more videos about how to start reading the Bible, just click here or here. And there you go.